Welcome everyone to the 2021 NLW Slammy Awards. What a year this has been. From the start of the year, when Triple H took over as EVP of NLW, right up until the historic 100th episode of No Limits Wrestling this year has been filled with five-star matches and unforgettable moments. In this NLW special, we will recap the best action from 2021, the highs and lows in the largest collection of awards for any Slammys ever. You, the fans, voted, and now we have the results. We will also have exclusive interviews with the winners of tonight's awards, as well as highlights from the best action this year. But let's start off with the award for Feud of the Year. We have seen some bitter rivalries over the course of 2021, from John Moxley and Kurt Angle's back and forth to Samoa Joe's return from suspension and quest for Tetsuya Naito's metalweight title, and more recently, Kenny Omega and Jeff Hardy's legendary battles. But the feud of the year you voted for was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Adam Cole, a rivalry which began in the summer of 2020, escalated this year when Stone Cold set his sights on the Undisputed Era, dropping them in a car, giving them a beer bath, tearing down the Titan Tron and more. However, once Stone Cold was fired as NLW Commissioner, his final act was to book himself in a street fight against Adam Cole. And here is the footage from that blow-off match from NLW True Grit, a match which saw both men take it to the limit. Trouble here. And what is Austin thinking? He's going to spear him, though. Adam Cole torpedoes him through the stage. Through the LED, at least part of that stage, broken through. And now they're fighting behind this huge set here tonight. And now Adam Cole and Steve Austin, what is... Oh, Jesus! Adam Cole thrown through the stage light. The shards of glass cutting up the skin. And Steve Austin has been pushed over the limit, look at this. Right through that stage light, behind the stage, shards of glass going everywhere. Adam Cole, he must be in a back. Oh, oh, I am. I am very sorry, folks. I'm sorry for the graphic nature of this match. But that's what you expect with a feud. This personal and there is a super kick. Adam Cole, I've never seen him like this before and a backdrop onto the barbed wire and the stunner and Adam Cole kicks out somehow some way Adam Cole kicks out and the fans may not be happy about it but Adam Cole I don't know whether it was instinct or what it was but he kicked out of the Stone Cold Stunner. And now that barbed wire table placed in the ring. Stone Cold, not a suplex, surely. He's trying for it. Oh, but Adam Cole. Oh, Panama, freaking sunrise. Through the table, through the barbed wire. And Adam Cole wrapping barbed wire his knee and the last shot onto the barbed wire and Adam Cole gets the win I am I can only gasp in awe at what we've just witnessed hands down the bloodiest match in NLW history and with that, Adam Cole cemented himself as one to watch in 2022. Now we move on to Tag Team of the Year. The tag division has been stacked this year, with teams such as War Machine, FTR, Los Ingobernables and the Lucha Bros lighting up the ring. But the team that you voted for as Tag Team of the Year are the two-time NLW Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks. Let's hear from the new Tag Team of the Year. 
You know, I'd say this is an honor, but to be honest, I'm still pissed off that we aren't the NLW Tag Team Champions. We defended those belts week in, week out against the Undisputed Era, against Edge and Christian, FTR, but now Andrade and Angel Garza, with all their friends, they have the gold now. And don't think we've forgotten about Death Triangle either, tried to end our careers. Who do these punks think they are, huh? I'll tell you who they are, they're lucky that we haven't kicked their ass yet. Young Bucks Tag Team of the Year 2021. In 2022, Young Bucks become three-time NLW Tag Team Champions. LIJ, we're coming for you. So many shocking things happened this year in NLW. We had the arrival of The Fiend, Bray Wyatt at Ungovernable in April, Jeff Hardy cashing in money in the bank at True Grit, and of course, who could forget when Triple H cancelled Metal in the summer. But one moment stands above them all. The award for Shocker of the Year goes to My Damn Toys crossover with NLW. Who could have predicted that? MDT, Trey White on an NLW broadcast. And on NLW 100, he had choice words for NLW EVP, Triple H. What I am focused on is running NLW and doing what is best for business. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Yo, that's... That's Trey White! What's good, Hunter? So sorry to interrupt your little rant there, but I figured the 100th episode of NLW needed a little bit more excitement, right? So for this NLW and metal simulcast, I've just made it a triple threat, a three-way with MDT. Imagine that, MDT, Trey White on an NLW broadcast. I know you're sitting there wondering to yourself what the hell is going on right now, and I'd probably be the exact same way. Well, let me cut it to you straight, Hunter. Over the past few weeks, I've been watching No Limits Wrestling. I've been keeping up with NLW. I heard that you were selling metals assets. You must be a fool to think that I don't keep up with these things. Being in this business, being in this wrestling business, I know all the ins and outs. I know all of the different secrets and undertones of this business deeper than you could ever imagine. And while I was watching, I heard that you were selling metals assets to an anonymous buyer. So I thought to myself, huh, who could benefit from buying metals assets? Who in this business could possibly benefit from this transaction? How about somebody who knows this business? Someone who has ran a Fed in this business? And somebody who's even stepped in the ring themselves in this business? What if MDT buys metal? My damn toys! This is a bombshell! Shameless self-promotion from Trey Whatever, just as I would expect. Do you know what? Take the assets, take the rings, the trademarks, promote MDT Live and Vindication, maybe rename your upcoming big My Damn Nation show to Metal Damn Nation, because that's exactly what metal is. Damn. It's worthless, and I'm glad you paid handsomely to take the assets off my hands, because now NLW has more money and will be the greatest force in wrestling because of me. Well, that's the thing, Hunter. You didn't let me finish. That's what you're always doing. You're always talking out of the side of your mouth. You're not listening to the full story. You're not paying fully attention to what's going on. And it might just be your biggest downfall. So yes, I did put in a bid for Metal's assets, but I was outbid at the last minute. And I thought to myself, this is a shame, but it's probably for the best, you know, with, with everything I have going on right now between my pick fed shows, between my company, between me stepping in the ring with Stage Creator, defending the Tag Team Championships in GCW. I don't know if I could handle myself with all those assets. It would be cool to bring in metal, promote it on the show, run some things while I try to get other videos done and things of that nature. Yeah, it would be great. But why does metal just need to end? After all, you said it yourself, you sold the trademark. Now the metal name and the brand itself is out of your hands, H. You may have canceled it, but that doesn't mean that metal is done. In fact, metal is alive and well from what I understand. Whoa, well, hold on a minute. That is not possible. Who has that kind of money to run a wrestling show? I'm glad you asked, Hunter, because there is someone out there with that kind of money. He called me right after the auction, right after he put in the last minute bid. You know what he did? He picked up the phone, he called me up, and he wanted me to tell you something. And you want to know what he said, Hunter? You've crossed the line.
Oh, wait a minute. That is not the NLW arena. Stone Cold is a metal. Stone Cold Steve Austin is in the metal arena and Triple H cannot believe his eyes. And shortly after this, it was announced that Stone Cold had purchased Metal's assets, leading to the creation of Metal Wrestling, which will debut in the new year. He also signed CM Punk and John Cena to his new promotion and let NLW know that a war was on. And you voted the Metal Invasion on NLW 100 as your moment of the year. Here are the unbelievable scenes from that event. I see Pete Dunn out here. And Cole and Cena brawling the ringside, and there's Cody. Hunter, get ready for metal wrestling. And get ready for war. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Oh my god. It's an invasion. It's happening. And it's John Moxley. And now the fight is on. Triple H pulling the troops to action. Stone Cold Steve Austin sending his men to the NLW arena and Cena and Cole battering each other and Shawn Michaels calling for reinforcements all hell has broken loose here the Kabuki Triad taken out and now look at Joe Joe choking up what the oh my god are breaking down here tonight John Cena chasing Adam Cole Triple H and Shawn Michaels running like scolded dogs the NLW commissioner and the EVP watching as their men get laid out one by one Stone Cold Steve Austin has incited a riot. Other honourable mentions for moment of the year go to the insane deletion match at the Hardy Compound on episode 91, HBK being named the new commissioner on episode 92, and Stone Cold destroying the Undisputed Era's car on episode 90. But the landscape of the company has shifted drastically after the announcement of Metal Wrestling. Now, let's shift our focus to the women of NLW. The likes of Becky Lynch, Bailey, Ember Moon and more have made an impact this year, but undoubtedly the biggest impact was made by the person you named Women's Wrestler of the Year, the Women's Champion Ronda Rousey. Ever controversial, the baddest woman on the planet started the year by breaking the arm of Ember Moon, taking her women's title and hiring the Kabuki Triad, allegedly, to break the arm of Becky Lynch. She has since lost the title to Lynch and been handed it back in light of Becky's injuries at the hands of the Triad. But here's what Ronda had to say about her award. Finally, some of you see sense to make me Women's Wrestler of the Year, but really is there any question? I'm a two-time women's champion. I've beaten Ember Moon, Trish Stratus, and as far as Becky Lynch goes, she may have beaten me on a fluke at True Grit. But guess what? Who's standing here as the champion? Becky, I hope you come back so I can beat you and send you away again. But as for the Kabuki Triad, Paul Ellering, lying and working all of you marks because I never asked him to do me any favors. I'm more than capable of breaking arms myself. Now, who's left? Because you've got Becky, who's injured, Ember and Riho scurried away to medal. So, get used to seeing me as women's champion for the foreseeable future. This time next year, you're going to be interviewing me again, as I once again become Women's Wrestler of the Year, still your NLW Women's Champion. I can't wait for Becky to return. Speaking of returns, we've seen some great ones this year. From John Cena coming back for Adam Cole at the Rumble, to HBK coming back to run NLW, and of course Kane breaking free from the Ministry and returning on NLW 97. But unanimously, the winner for Return of the Year goes to CM Punk for his return at number 30 in the Royal Rumble match. Here is that moment, followed by some words from the man himself. Well, 29 men have entered. There is only one man left. Who is number 30 in the Royal Rumble? The Chronicle 
Sun, the second city saint, has returned to No Limits Wrestling. My God, what a shock. CM Punk, CM Punk is back. And Punk with a GTS. The man who made him into WrestleMania opposite Stone Cold Steve Austin. The man who won the NLW Championship and now eliminates Pete Dunne. Since CM Punk no longer works for NLW, let me accept this award on his behalf. CM Punk could have been a valuable asset to NLW, but he instead decided to ruin the contract signing of Conor McGregor by attacking him and decided to sign with Metal Wrestling. And I say, good riddance. But let me be perfectly clear. Our next episode, NLW 101, will be in Chicago, but CM Punk obviously will no longer be appearing at that event. Well, Punk, I just hope that it was worth it. John Cena too. I hope it was worth turning down my contract offer. On the other hand, Finn Balor has yet to re-sign with Metal, making him a free agent. I can't comment on negotiations, but let me just say that in Chicago, the Prince may well show his face. Well, Triple H has to bring the mood down, but let's bring it up again. Hidden Gem gets thrown around a lot, but these matches truly were Hidden Gems this year. Keith Lee and Walter tore the house down on NLW 100. Pete Dunne and Finn Balor battled Tooth and Nail at Ungovernable last April, and the Young Bucks faced FTR in a Tag Team Classic on NLW 93. But the match that you voted for as Hidden Gem of the Year was the Super X Cup Final between Pac and Mustafa Ali. This tournament stretched from September to March, and the final match proved the best. Check out this epic encounter from NLW 92. Nolly on the apron of the Poison Rana. On the hardest part of the ring, Ali gets spiked. And that Poison Rana could have jammed the neck of Ali as Pac comes over the top with a Fosby flop. The corkscrew dive, the plancher wiping out Ali. And now, what is Pac thinking? On the stage in the 450. Three big moves in a row, and Pac is on fire. Pac with a 450 wipes out Ali, crushing him. We'll take a look at this incredible series of. Maneuvers, first of all, Poison Rana on the apron, then the dive, the corkscrew puncher over the top, and then finally this, the 450 splash to the floor. And now Ali clutching his ribs. They may be very much injured right now as Pac on the top rope. Shooting star press lands on his feet. And a poison spike Rana from Ali. And Mustafa Ali on the second rope, DDT. Pac did a handstand off of that DDT. And now Ali running to the top. Here it comes. Oh, 5 4, no! Coin to the brutalizer. Pac has won every single tournament match with this move. It was the same move that he used to make Jushin Von der Liger tap. And Ali, oh, Ali with a roll up, but a kick out. Pat kicked out at the last minute. And on the shoulders. Oh God, a burning hammer. Burning hammer to Ali. And now Pack sees us in control. Pat gonna go to the top rope. It's a finger beauty, the black arrow, but knees are up. Knees are up from Ali, but a kick out. And Pack back to his feet. But a super kick turns him inside out. And now Ali on the top rope. Oh, five, four. And Ali wins the Super X Cup. Most of all, Ali is the number one contender for the Exhibition Championship. It started in September. 
And Ali, every step of the way, consistently putting out bangers of performances. And here, Mustafa Ali, truly one of the breakout stars this year. Other breakout stars include the ring general Walter and the incredibly talented metal wrestling star John Morrison. But the person that you voted for as your breakout star of 2021 is the Atlas champion Keith Lee. He is undefeated, he is limitless, and here is what he had to say about the award. Wow. NLW fans, thank you so much for this award. It's awesome that I've been able to come into NLW this year and show you all what I can do. 2022, you're looking at Wrestler of the Year. I'm eyeing up more titles. I'm going to continue to defend this Atlas title. In fact, next year, for me, the possibilities are limitless. 2022, anyone who steps up to me will bask in my glory. So many shows this year have achieved high praise from fans and critics alike. NLW has been on fire this year, as well as Metal, putting on its best shows ever. Just look at Ungovernable, with the Elimination Chamber, a hardcore Fatal 4-Way and The Fiend's Return. Then again, what about NLW True Grit? You had a Buried Alive match, an Ultimate X match, Street Fight Triple Cage all on the same show. Not to mention the grandeur that was NLW 100. But you voted, and the show of the year goes to the fifth NLW Royal Rumble. We had an epic tag team tables match. Jeff Hardy vs Kenny Omega, The Fiend vs Kurt Angle, the Kabuki Triad's in-ring debut, Conor McGregor debuting for the company, but this show is most remembered for what was the best Royal Rumble ever. As Kane sees up, and Finn Balor is face to face with the Devil's Screamer Demon. I think Balor might have something to say about that as he delivers a missile drop kick. Balor or Kane? Who's it going to be? Finn Balor with a coup de grace, but he's caught in midair. Choke slam, maybe no. Goes behind. Oh my God! Tombstone coming. But Balor, oh, but Kane, Kane holds on. Kane holds on to the top rope. He has not been eliminated. And the clothesline, oh my goodness. And damning The Undertaker. The Undertaker sweeping the leg and look out for Viscera. The Undertaker's henchman Viscera taking out Kane. And now we're down to two. Finn Balor and The Undertaker. Well, these may go to WrestleMania, but Finn Balor tries to eliminate Taker. But he holds on. Oh, but throttles him by the throat. And throws him out, no. Oh, no, wait a minute, Tombstone. Tombstone coming. No, Finn Balor escapes. And Balor on the second rope and stops the Undertaker. Undertaker's gone. Finn Balor, Finn Balor has won the Royal Rumble. Finn Balor. Finn Balor will now go to WrestleMania, but who will he sign with, NLW or Metal Wrestling? Balor, a contender for Wrestler of the Year, along with so many others like Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega. It was a close one, but you the fans voted, and for your Wrestler of the Year, you voted for the NLW champion, Jeff Hardy. And here are some words from the champ himself. I don't need the approval of the fans to call me Wrestler of the Year. This NLW title says I am the best in the world today. The opinion of you mortals means nothing to me. I answer to a higher power. Myself, The Undertaker, and the rest of the ministry will not take being embarrassed by anyone. That includes Kane, Bailey, and you, Finn. Balor. There is only one prince and it's the Prince of Darkness. 
You want to fight me for my title at WrestleMania? You want to embarrass the Antichrist of professional wrestling? Try me. Because what you fail to realize is Jeff Hardy is immortal. And on NLW 101 in Chicago, when the ministry addresses the masses, I dare you to show up and find out what's in store for you if you face me at WrestleMania. Well, Jeff Hardy's going to have to come face to face with Bala sooner than later. Now, before we announce the match of the year, let's take a moment to reflect on 2021. For NLW, Triple H was anointed as EVP on January 1st. He put both NLW Commissioner Stone Cold and the Metal Commissioner on probationary periods, and now both are gone from their jobs. Triple H appointed his friend Shawn Michaels to the commissioner role and both seem to be on a power trip. With HBK screwing Omega out of the NLW title, Triple H cancelling Metal, but let's not allow them to take away from the in-ring action this year. We had Jeff Hardy's betrayal of his brother Matt in the Insane Deletion and his ascension into The Undertaker's ministry as champion. We had faction warfare between the Young Bucks, the Death Triangle and Los Ingobernables. The rivalry between Stone Cold and the Undisputed Era. Kevin Owens' return to fight Daniel Bryan and apparently align with Triple H. Then you've got Metal. You had Edge and John Moxley's alliance then feud, Brody Lee becoming the first hardcore champion of the Metal Era, Samoa Joe winning the Elimination Chamber to become Metalweight Champion, the Steel Asylum match, Ultimate X, the draft and more. But nothing compared to this next match. It featured title win of the year, extreme moment of the year when a man was thrown from the top of the cage and it is your match of the year. You voted and the match of the year is the Triple Cage Kenny Omega, Daniel Bryan, and Kevin Owens for the NLW title from True Grit. But before Omega gets to him, is Daniel Bryan going to unlock the door? He's got the key, but... Kenny Omega slams the chair in the spine. And now there's weapons throughout. There's the kendo stick and a chop from Omega. Any one of these men could fall through at any moment. Goes for the V-trigger, maybe, but he hits the cage. And Daniel Bryan now, with that kendo stick. The yes lock applied. That kendo stick ripping at the flesh of Omega. Wait a minute. Kevin Owens has joined them. And Kevin Owens has the key. Owens are locking the door. But Daniel Bryan slams the door in his face. And there's a German suplex onto the steel with that kendo stick hooking. Brian is losing a lot of blood fast and, and now Omega, I should say Owens is also bleeding and raking that barbed wire back across the face. And Owens with a brain buster suplex on the steel and they're just above that hatch that they used to get in. And now Kevin Owens showing off his sadistic nature, taunting. But a feature, oh my god! Kenny Omega with a mega V trigger that sends both men crashing through the side of that cage. Look at this again. Oh, it's too busy. Showboat in and gets hit with a V trigger. Both men fall through the side and this cage gets busted open. Speaking of busted open, look at this. Stomping the trash can on the skull of Owens. And that table off the throat of Kenny Omega. I mean, it's, it's desperation at this point. They're on the outside now. And Omega with that crutch right to the skull of Daniel Bryan who's laid out on that table. If Bryan falls off that table, he's falling through the announce table, I'm telling you now. And Omega climbs a cage with a super, super moonsault. And Omega just about hangs on. Daniel Bryan through the table and there's a stunner. A stunner from Kevin Owens. Owens taking out the cleaner. And Owens now climbing that trust. Kevin Owens is on top of the second cage. 
All he has to do, climb up that third one. And he's trying to, to get the title belt, the psycho knee from Daniel Bryan. Who puts a stop to it? Man, oh man, it's high risk up there. On top of the cage. But thrown into that third one. Owens creating some separation. Brian hanging on. Oh my god! Good god almighty! Thrown off the top of the cage! And a V trigger from Omega! And a one winged angel! Owens and Brian! Both men are down! Omega! He's got a clear path to the championship! All he has to do is unhook it! Wait! Wait a minute, what is this? What the hell? It's the Undertaker! What is he doing out here? in mid-match Jeff Hardy cashing in money in the bank and Jeff is the new NLW champion but what the hell is going on we saw Hardy earlier tonight he won the contract of his own brother. What a match that was. But before we wrap up, I would just like to thank you, the fans, for your patience this year. It has not been easy. My hard drive broke. I still don't know if it can be saved, but I should have an update on January 5th. But I guarantee NLW will return. I don't know when, but it will be back, hopefully sooner than you think. The schedule will resume once things are sorted, but in 2022, you will see Metal Wrestling, WrestleMania 5, and more awesome action from NLW, NLW 24-7, Metal Wrestling, Raw and SmackDown rebooked, and more. Thank you for watching. NLW will see you in 2022.